Four Town Select Board meeting again, uh, it's July 6th. We are now in the John Hogan meeting room. Um, we can be near meeting. Uh, so we have general public comment. Um, Travis, is there anything that you had for general public comment? Yes, I do. Uh, it's regarding, uh, I noticed recently the select board's been talking about uh, all terrain vehicles going over, whether they allow them or not allow them on uh, town highways. And I've had quite a few incidences recently on Moortown Mountain Road um, regarding ATV all terrain vehicles. And uh, one damaged my truck, I chipped in my windshield went flying by me and uh, the state police were called they didn't show up until many hours later but uh, there was no way to identify the uh, ATV um, there's no registration marks anything on it um, traveling directly down the road you know I was traveling down the road also and there's been several other incidences uh, with lots of all-terrain vehicles on Moortown Mountain Road um, a lot this year that uh, state police have been called on each time and sometimes sending the sheriff out when they couldn't make it. Um, I'm just uh, hoping that the select board will allow uh, or will do this the proper way and have public comments um, at that time when you do have it. And uh, I just want it to be known uh, to the taxpayers and people throughout Moortown that uh, it's a very noisy endeavor. Um, I have many recordings of very loud vehicles going by all hours of the night, and there's very little to no way to enforce this. Um, with all that said, we also did a site visit today, which I'm not commenting too much on, but the, the point of that, um, bringing that up is, the town doesn't even know where all of its legal trails are supposedly, or class four roads, or where everything leads up, that's what the, before meeting was for today and also later on tonight. And I should hope that the town focuses a little more on that and spends a little more effort on that before they even come close to allowing ATVs to travel on our roads. Um, my vehicle has to meet it be a safety standard. And it's not only a state safety standard, it's also a federal state safety standard. And that's called SAE, SAE and DOT. All my headlights have to meet that. I have to do a strenuous inspection every year. I have to pay insurance. So if we do allow these uh, ATVs on the road, I hope they're properly insured and properly educated according to the VSA state statutes of the state of Vermont. So this is just voicing some of my concern. I know there will be an opportunity at some point to, uh, to make a certified public comment about that, I hope. Thank you. Thanks. Um, we will, just a, a note on that, we are, we started talking about that, Travis, um, I think our last meeting, we will, uh, I think perhaps at uh, this next July meeting, Ray and uh, Callie are working on some recommendations. Um, we'll talk about those as a board and then we'll, we'll definitely have some public comment on yeah. this. Uh, I think our thought was that we would end up eventually voting on this at town meeting, um, uh, but we need to, that's a little ways away. Uh, we want to see what, what comes out of it, but it'll be a good public process, and I appreciate your your comments on that as well. Yeah, Thanks. thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I asked Stefan to come in uh, for public comment. Um, Thank you, Stefan, for, for coming yeah, in. Sure. Um, we needed a little bit of time, and that was a short get it. Uh, this weekend, I had another uh, call from, uh, it happened to be up on uh, Route 100B here for the, the Farnham dogs. Um, so this has been, a, you know, we all know about this. Uh, Stefan, how many times roughly do you think you've dealt with these issues? With yesterday's events, it was 13 times since the 16th of March. All right. And Shane last year, uh, and I don't have his records in front of me, but I have dealt with them numerous, numerous times as well. Um, uh, Mr. Farnham uh, is, is um, 
Well, he abused the, the, the last time they were brought, uh, so about two weeks ago, they were found in Middlesex at the, the, um, the new restaurant there, the, the, the garage station, whatever it is, the, 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 the filling station. Um, there was a, <coughs> some people from Middlesex brought the dogs to Central Vermont Humane Society. Uh, Mr. Farnham was made aware of that and verbally um, harassed. Um, anyways, they, he was not allowed there. Um, and then they asked Stefan if we would bring the dogs back and, and I was not, uh, it's, it's not our job to ferry dogs back and forth. Um, either way, we lost the contract at Central Vermont Humane Society because they don't want anything to do with the farm and the farm dogs um, because of his abuse and they're quite frankly um, frightened of the guy and I didn't want to put Stefan in the way either, you know, to send him out there. So uh, we need to um, start a process to, um, to take the dogs and Stefan, do you have any insights on that or how that process works? Um, my understanding is uh, we have to go to the the town lawyer and get yep. them on board and then we hold a, a meeting with Mike and discuss what's happened and you know all the chances we've tried to give him bring you know bring him that we we have held the fines to try to help him be able to have the money to build um, you know a kennel area for them so that they're enclosed and can't get out. So bring all that up and then at that point as the select board and working with the town lawyer we can figure out if you know, it's just, it's unsafe for the motorists going through town. It's unsafe for the people that, you know, own property in the town. The dogs are great, but people don't know that. You know, a random pit bull comes up to your house, you're not gonna, you know, stick your hand out and say hey to it. You're gonna, you know, walk carefully around them. And they've been eating uh, people's gardens and, and things like that. So I think that the next step forward would definitely be talking to the lawyer and getting for a meeting, or at least, yeah. or at least put out the certified letter to invite him for the meeting, and it's up to him if he decides to show or not. Okay. Um. And also, currently, um, so we've been holding the fines. He owes us eight hundred and twenty dollars. Okay. Very good. Just something to keep in mind as well. Yep. So, any discussion around the board here? Yeah, I think uh, I think what he's saying pretty much follows the Don board. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I'm trying to to work off from. I don't want to you know go against that because that you know is going to be our best our best bet to, to move forward and keep everything you know on the up and up and have it all work out. I mean, so, it, it's it's a shame because they're great dogs. It just they they can't stay home. Right, and it's causing issues, and unfortunately, I'm afraid someone's going to get hurt, um, or, or someone that picks them up, or a, a caregiver of the dogs, or something, because Mike is um, he seems to be a volatile guy. Yes, absolutely. Um, I have, um, I've been in contact with the state police before because of some of his comments to me, and you know, there's not a lot of things they can do because of his comments. It's you know, just on a hearsay basis, but you know. I'm one, one time away from, you know, who knows what could happen. Right. And it, you know, puts me in danger every time. And we can't bring the dogs to Central Vermont, and Roy's won't take them anymore. So I don't really have a place to take the dogs other than back to him. Right. Or are they in the shop one day, you know? Or, yeah, or can they <laughs> come around the shop and check? Check into the town garage? Yeah. Yes. We didn't, we didn't have a place to bring them, and I couldn't just drop them off at his house without him home. That ended up being, being a fiasco all that. So. And I, um, last fall, tried to, or I did, I stopped to talk to Mike and try to reason with him, and um, he just pegged rocks at me. So, um, <laughs> wasn't the best meeting I ever had. <laughs> um, so at this point, unless anyone around the, the table has any um, other thoughts that we would contact, our attorney and move the process forward to um, um, fix this problem or attempt to. Yeah. Yeah. Something, something's got to get it before somebody gets hurt or God forbid that I was hit by a yeah, car. Exactly. Yeah. 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 They're, they're constantly crossing <clears throat> 100 feet and only farm. Yeah, we, 
we've had a, lots of people um, reach out. Uh, you know, base at the dog. You know, we've had a lot of people who think they're the nice, friendly dogs. So I think they, people would be happy to take them. So, so there are two dogs. So there, I there's three of them. Wow. But I've only seen two recently. So I don't know if one has gotten rid of already or if it just been staying near the house. I, <laughs> I I can't even you know comment too much on it because I I don't know. But there is three of them total that I've picked up several different times. Sometimes it's- And they're usually together. Yeah, it's usually at least two of them, sometimes all three of them. <laughs> See anyone that puts it right in the front of the truck with them and uh, you seem to- Yeah, they're, they're great dogs. They, <laughs> sit right, they sit right on the passenger seat, lay down. They're, they're really great dogs. I'm a dog guy and they're, they're great. If I can take dogs, I love them, but. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Stefan. So, and I appreciate your, your help. And, uh, certainly, when we take those positions of uh, animal control office, we don't uh, um, think we're running into those types of situations, just a dog here and there. So thanks for your time. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, you've done a real good job. Yeah. Can I mention one, <clears throat> one dog-related thing? Sure. Just to maybe for some interest. So VLCT on July 22nd. I buy four of that. It's going to have a dog control law and enforcement weapon. I don't know if you know about yep, that. I, uh, but I didn't know if that's something that Stefan would be interested in. Have, we should maybe have him take. And I think there's a small fee or something like that. You know. yep, no, actually, I forwarded that and asked him about uh, two okay. weeks ago to, if he could take yeah. care of that. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I definitely do want to go because they can give me some, some insight from them. They work with the bunch of town, so hopefully I can get, yeah. you know, get some good ideas from that. Hopefully, moving forward on, you know, maybe different dog once in a great while instead of, you know, the same dogs day in and day out. Right. Good. No dogs. Well, thanks, and thank you, Don, for reminding us of that. Yeah. Um, all right, so we'll go ahead and move on. Uh, we're on the agenda a little bit behind. So 6.05, we had um, Legal Trail 15. We all went up for a... Um, or I guess not we all, and uh, Callie was unable to make it um, due to work issues. So we had an opportunity to uh, go up and take a walk on Trail 15. Um, there was, um, and Sasha will give you a list of the names of everyone who was there. Okay. Um, so you do have that, I think, between John and I, we were able to compile that. Um, so as a board, we what we saw, I think it was fairly self-explanatory and there's some questions uh, of where that trail ultimately turns and ends. Um, what I would suggest that we, how we start, uh, Pam had showed us, she had some documentation that's something that Cheryl Lynn had sent out to us. And this is correspondence uh, from 2010 um, from the state. Uh, there seems to be a number of questions and issues. What I'd like to do is start by having uh, actually, Cheryl Brown, who was originally working on that, to uh, come in and spend a day to kind of unravel this for us and the, um, the emails, um, just to see where we're at. Um, and then at some point, I think we'll need to get, uh, you know, a lawyer or, or someone to interpret interpretate what we're looking at. But I want to get all the information that is out there. On this, there were some questions that it may be uh, may have been changed at one point, um, and John was here at that time. He doesn't recall any of that. So, uh, before we uh, go forward with anything else, I think we need to get all that information. Make sure we have that in front of us. Uh, it may be a simple explanation. The answer may be already here somewhere, uh, and if not, I would suggest that we we move forward. Um, and, and Travis is correct. We have a number of town trails and, and, and some roads that are ghost trails or roads where you know there are surveys or incorrect surveys uh, and I think on a yearly basis we need to um, start or continue to, to start identifying these. Um, I think uh, you know in fact we were finishing up uh, hopefully sometime soon uh, on the other side of the mountain um, where Travis lives but I think uh, this next um, trail 15 over here would be if there's no nothing in the 
documents that clearly points, all right, this is where it is or this is where it turns, uh, that is one that we should, uh, should have surveyed as well. Ray, John, Kelly, Don, any thoughts? That's, that's, yeah. what, uh, and that's what we talked yeah. about many years back, is to take one or two of these a year maybe and have them surveyed so we really knew where everything went. And in some cases, I mean, we've done it once, where it dead ended at somebody's property, and so we, we, did, we did throw it up. Um, but otherwise, we, we don't. But I don't know. I, I mean, I'd be curious, would the residents, you know, what would be your thoughts in terms of what would you like? I think just a clear picture of where it starts and where it ends. Okay. You know? um, and like I said, it, we, it wasn't an issue until we started looking and then we realized there's some documentation that we'd never seen before and being the landowner, we were real surprised that there had been communication about changing the trail, but we knew nothing about it. Right. So, um, <coughs> you know, just to be clear for everyone moving forward where it is. So that's, that's where we want to start is where okay. that change came from or what that was. If we can unravel that, then maybe that, that's a good starting point. Um, and this trip does dead end on Maryland's land. So it does go yeah, I know. Yeah. Either way, whichever is defined where it goes. Still it, ends there. It's going to be her property. Yeah. Right in the middle of her property. I also right. need to look at the feed. My father-in-law bought the third house spot. And I remember something about it being in three separate parcels and that the town and ended there. But I'll have to dig that feed up and see. Maybe the legal trail ended at the third house. Oh, yes, yeah, I knew that was in some time. So the third yeah. house is where the woodlot was? Okay. There's an old cellar hole that's kind mm -hmm. of filled right. in that you wouldn't know. Yeah. That's what's known as a So I, I will research that deed, and if it ends there, then there's no big deal because it doesn't turn either yeah. way. Right. All right, well, we'll again, I'll contact, or I'll, yeah, I'll try to speak with Cheryl tomorrow, see what her time frame is, and, but um, we'll move forward with this and try to get... So, Tom, we talked about me measuring. Do you want me to get you that distance, or do you want to wait? I can wait on that. We'll see what the, you know, we're just trying to see what that comes out. Yeah. And then there'll probably be a time where they'll, you know, a survey or something might come up and do something sure. like that. But uh, uh, it seems like the easiest way to... To figure out where it is. Yeah, I think with all these tails, I think it's it'll just solve a lot of problems. Yeah. Just to do a couple of year and just right. get it defined. Right. Spend the money, and because it, yeah. it typically it'll cost us, you know, probably around five grand before we're done, before you're, we're doing it. But it's still worth it. Yeah, I think for everyone's peace of mind and and because a lot of properties. the is it's on a map. It's it's town property. We can do what we want. A lot of times they're not even on the town trail. Right, you shared a story that you had someone last fall come up and park their camper there, right? Yeah, in the back of the pickup truck. Right, because they and thought they were on a camp on, on, on the trip. Trip. Right, so that's a, an example of a, um, what can happen when they're not clearly defined. So I, I agree, and I agree with Travis. We something we should probably look at. So thank you. Yeah. I appreciate you coming out. Okay. Thank you. All right, so we'll go ahead. Uh, yeah, you can stay all night if you want. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you don't mind. Um, so I want to go ahead and move on to the agenda. We have um, 6.15, we have zoning fees. So everyone, if they want to pull out their zoning fees. If anyone in the audience at the session may have an extra one if you want to look at it. Um, so David, our zoning administrator, came to us. Um, few meetings ago looking for some clarity and also uh, changing some of the zoning permits and then getting clarified there on one document they were stating something and the other another so this is really to get everything in units um, working together and um, perhaps some of these were changed to add a little bit because of the time difference so first want to take a look at uh, we'll just go down what we're uh, looking to change is the subdivision uh, 150 per lot, that's an added um, thing. We never had that one. Uh, ponds, um, 100. And 
if we um, and those are zoning permits that we were, were talking about there uh, and under the development Re review board fees and he uh, has been working with John on this um, they were looking to the first conditional use non-conforming use residential move from 75 to 100 um, conditional use non-conforming use commercial from 125 to 150 and a development development review board variance for residents uh, 125 changed to 150 um, pardon me a resident 75 changed to 100 and commercial 125 with an increase to 150 um, the other thing that is added uh, down below it's a letter of um, no known violations uh, 25 and I'm not familiar with what that particular um, miscellaneous yeah, um, would be. Yeah. Do you know anything about no? Yeah. Would somebody is selling a lot of the lawyers are asking for no known violations to make sure everything is compliant. Okay. Thank well, you so much. The research has to be done, so it's $25 to do that research. Yep. All right, I know I went through those fairly quickly, but um, are there any questions as for any of them or all of them? Yeah, uh, I do. Um, yep. Um, so the subdivision 150 for is there? There is no fee right now. Is that the way I, I understand that, or are we increasing the fee there? It is to if you're subdividing the permit, there's a fee for that. But if any additional law you want to add on later or divide later, it would be an additional fee for that. Oh, okay, so it's a lot added to the subdivision. Yeah. Okay. 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 At a later date. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, that makes more sense. So it should really say 150 per lot added to subdivision. Okay. That's a previously approved subdivision. Yeah. And um, all right. So at the ponds, hundred dollars. I'm not sure why we would want that fee um, unless there's some engineering involved. Do you know if there's any engineering involved with that? I think it came back to like the contracts when they had that, it was going to be over a grand that they wanted that the zoning, going by the square footage. Yeah. So I think that's why he came up with that. It was a cheaper alternative to it, but I don't know as far as the rest of it. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, now I can refresh my memory. Um, yeah, instead of charging a square foot, yeah. Yeah. Right. this would be a, just a flat rate right. for whether you had a hundred gallon pond or a yeah. ten thousand gallon pond. Um, it, I mean, a hundred dollars, I mean, I know it doesn't amount to much, but it, it seems a little high to me, but uh, considering <clears throat> but Ray, I think that it's significantly cheaper than what we were looking at <laughs> right. because remember what it was, it was. Uh, those guys were, you know, Von Trapp was looking for a food. Like you said, it was a thousand dollars. Right. Maybe you could do a sliding, like for under a certain amount of gallons or something. Uh, I think when you're, you know, we're starting. It's out. only a hundred gallons. Even if it's the size of this room, it's only a hundred gallons. Right. Well, I mean, to put a pond in, you have to get, get all kinds of, you know, state and environmental approvals to put it anyway. So this is just for maybe product. Yeah, I, I don't think it's because uh, they need a zoning permit for yeah. it, and you know, see if it fits the, the in the, the lot. Or the yeah. And they're always like I said, it's not an added, it's nothing new. It's just actually more a reasonable fee. Okay. Um, as far as the DRB board increases, these are coming directly from the DRB or. Uh, John and uh, David were working together on this on the board, from my understanding of it. That's what um, David has shared with me. Yeah. I, uh, I this seems like the, those fees, I don't know how many, of, what our dollar revenue is from every year, but uh, it does, you know, if you're a resident, that, a small resident, you know, 
$25 an increase is could be significant. You know, I, I, you know, I don't I don't understand. I I guess I'm having trouble why we have to increase the DRV rates at this time. When you said um do you feel different with residential and commercial? Yeah, right across the I feel more uh, <clears throat> I feel more towards the residential people that are you know trying to improve their house and um, or try to improve the land. I'd rather not increase the residential portion. The commercial portion, I guess I'm okay with. But the residentials, I, I think, you know, I think I'd like to give them a break. We're all we're all trying to make it here. I certainly don't have any arguments with that. Unless we want to double back with the DRV and hear what, what their reasoning is or something, but I, don't know, I agree, you know, you can't disagree with Ray either. Yeah, I, mean, I think we could do it either way. Uh, um, I'm, I guess I would at this point, I think Ray's idea of maybe uh, keeping the residential and just changing the commercial would be fine. I'm hoping, uh, Based on my conversations with David, that those he and John and DRB had good discussions about this. Um, so I think uh, you know that information is probably good stuff there. But I, I agree. You know, why don't we keep the, the residential? Um, we have conditional use, non-conforming use residential um, at seventy-five. <coughs> let's keep it there rather than raise it to a hundred. Uh, and we have the variance at a hundred. Um, uh, pardon me, at 75, let's keep that and not change it to 100. And we'll change the two commercials from 125 to 150. I do agree, but I, I think that it would be good to get input. You want to hear from, from John? John yeah. All right. yeah just. All right, so why don't we go back then to John <clears throat> and just uh, we'll confirm with him that they've had an opportunity to look at these and we'll give them our recommendation that we'd like to keep the residential at um, the 75 both for the variance and the uh, commercial use, non-conforming use, um, and see what their thoughts on that. Is everyone good with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. All right, so um, now we have the courts communications so why don't we uh, go ahead and go around the board. Uh, so, uh, Callie, do you have any reports, communications, or anything that you'd like to share? So Monday, mm -hmm. last week, Ray and I met. Mm -hmm. Talked about some ATV stuff, got that organized. I have not heard back from the state yet about signs and what that would look like. Um, I did check in with Berlin, and kind of the vibe that I got was that they weren't really going to do anything with it. Yeah. So, because I guess they haven't had any issues with anything. So unless it got brought to them, they weren't really going to yeah. change what was <laughs> happening. Don't open a box. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They've got enough boxes yeah. open <laughs> right now. Yeah. So, that was kind of it. All right. So you guys, um, when do you have some other stuff that you want to bring to the board and some kind of recommendations or what we sh how we should move forward on this. Is that I'd say the first meeting in August or okay. Is yeah. that okay with you? Yeah. Um, I mean we are certainly I think approaching at a small <coughs> scale basis. <coughs> you know we're both in the Jonesburg area. Uh, whatever I think we're proposing with only apply uh, we're not talking about opening the whole down and more down, I don't think. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, and just going back to what Travis said earlier, uh, I think uh, one of the problems we're seeing over there on our side is, is there's a lot of unregistered vehicles going up and down the roads that there's no regulation on. We had a race car the other weekend who probably went 50 by my house. Like straight race car, no doors, so, nothing. You know, I, I'm hoping by some regulation at least we can get identify you know if we say they got to be registered and they got to be inspected and have insurance that they'll at least, at least have a plate you can track on them. if we yeah we can track them down because right now it's there really is no way to track them down i mean right when they go by 
Is it possible for them to be registered within the town? Well, that's one thing we, we've thought about is having a special registration in the town, and I, I don't know if that's Barton. possible. You can look into Barton. I know Barton does yeah. maybe separate from VASA and all that. They have their own little town registration. You, right. you spend your money in crew if you're registered and insured. What town is that? Barton. 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 Okay. So yeah. that, uh, thanks. Maybe no, a well. It's a little bit over there, uh, but it's up there, yeah. yes. I mean, <laughs> over <laughs> up yonder. Yeah. I just feel like, like a, you know, I, I think there's a lot of people um, that out there with the ETVs and ETVs that are responsible drivers that, you know, that should be uh, able to ride these roads in a legal manner and, and to just say, no, I don't think is is the best way to go. Mm -hmm. so a, just a quick question, I'm not expecting an answer, but does a registered ETV say that it can be run down a road if the select board allows it because right, just because you register an ATV that doesn't mean anything right I, the way i interpret the ordinance that if we say they can do it they can do it if they're registered inside on the on the town roads only no state roads on the town roads right. Right. yeah but it has to be an ordinance and if, to put you on the spot ray you don't have to answer this of course but have you ever taken a safety course for driving an atv i have not that's one of the state requirements of running an ATV on town. I don't think so. No, it's not. VSA? Not for VASA. Not in the well, this would be for VASA then, is what you're recommending? Well, no. VASA does most of most of the sales. So VASA's requirements are basically you have to be registered, insured, and over 12. Right. Well, some, and follow your ATV. There's some other age limits on. in there, but in that. Uh, um, so how much bass trail do we have in Wartown? I just was made aware of some up on the trail we were on near today. Well, they're two so. different. Bass is snowmobiles. Bass is ATVs. So bass uh, And they're and completely they, different. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and they don't always connect because the snowmobiles and the ATVs sometimes don't always So does bass work the same type of way that um, the snowmobile trails work? Yes or no? Yep. But I, I don't think we're proposing no. VASA. No. no. Open it up to VASA. But well, that's why most of the state statutes are written for VASA. Uh, not the VLCT ordinance that we've been using as a guideline. Doesn't mention VASA at all. Yeah, I'd like to see that ordinance or something. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Well, well, I have a question. So when they register in a town, that means not just the people living in the town, people who want to come to your town, they have to register to be on your roads or something. That's the way I would do it. Is that what you're that, saying? That was my understanding of how it works. Like, I could, wow. I could leave and go up to Bart and spend I mean, $25 as long as I have proof of insurance and proof of registration and yeah. get the $25 sticker from them. If someone drives up from New Hampshire, right? And you have to go no. get a day pass. Yeah, I want. Like for okay, us to go well, to the pantry, you have I, to get a yeah, day pass. They do and that. Sticker. People do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that may be a way to control uh, it a little bit better. I was going to mention also uh, where I've bicycled up in, you know, in uh, Roxbury up above. I think that gets to be Brookfield or something. Yeah. You know, up in there, they, they there's a whole network of. Uh, they, they have a whole network of trails, um, right. ATV trails, like that's on the road thing. and go off the road and all that. Oh, is it know if that, trails? Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know if that would be another source of talking to a town, that's all. Sheffield does the same thing. Oh, okay. Where you can go from Sheffield and you can actually go down almost into Danville on it. Because uh -huh. we've done that. <laughs> okay. The big meeting tonight is Marshfield, so ATV is being allowed in Marshfield. And I would have liked to have joined that one today, but we're already talking about it here. <laughs> more it was, uh, this so there are, are they going to open their whole town to it? Was that their proposal? There is many different sides to it. It's been going on for quite some time. It's a right. hot issue, people. I, so I can't. The box will be open up there. Yeah. All right. We don't want to just up there. We got our own discussions here. Yeah. All right. I mean, it's, it's a work in progress. Yeah. 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 And I think there's going to be some common ground that we can yeah. all come on uh, come together with that. Don, did you have anything to share with us today? Um, yes, I just, um, so we did a, well, even that's good that Stefan's here, so we did walk through with Efficiency Vermont, 
uh, yep. to both the fire station and the town of the garage. The fire station uh, actually, you know, was uh, in pretty good shape. I mean, there was a couple of small, I don't have the report in front of me. Um, but the town garage, uh, there are a couple of items that we really should um, act on, and that's the lighting. Not only is it not really very energy efficient, it happens to be a lot that's not even working right now. So to, if you're going to go try to fix what's not working, you might as well you know, yeah. replace the lights and yeah. there's money available for that. And then the other thing that uh, was discovered is in the right, is, as you're looking out, if you're in the garage, so the right front bay, um, there's a lot of moisture that's generated from when the trucks come in in the winter, and it gets up on the roof. Stephen will jump in if I'm not describing this right. And then the, the metal's corrugated, it gets on the roof, it's running down, and it's gone out into the eave. And there's damage happening, and it's, you know, there's moisture, and it's wet, and it's, it needs to be dealt with. And um, the gentleman who we walked through had some suggestions, but also, uh, you know, suggested maybe some contractors that we could look at it with or something. It's something that we shouldn't just kind of like. No, rotten wood yeah. in the building. No, it's yeah. not. Yeah, it's, it's, it's right. Exactly. It, it's such a <laughs> building now. Our chance to, you know, to nip it and nip it in the bud and, and get it taken care of. And it seems to be what happens is because it's radiant floors, as the snow and water and whatever's on the trucks comes off, it evaporates, rises to the ceiling, runs down the ceiling into the top of the wall. And runs through the wall into the eaves, and then yeah. just sits there and freezes and thaws and freezes and thaws. Hmm. And big icicles outside. Yes, and and that's how they really sort of the zero in on that. There's a problem. There. So, is that like it was a safe plate problem at the fire station too? No, 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 no. The fire station is in good shape. Oh, okay. I mean, there's a couple of small things down the road that they could do. All right. So we on that project on that particular thing, the lighting. I'm a, Assuming the efficiency Vermont had recommendations for the lighting. Uh, yes. That report. yes. And yeah. So why don't Sasha you can work with Don, maybe looking that over to see what that is. There may be uh, grant applications in there. Usually there are. You, um, yeah. No, through, through efficiency Vermont. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they'll. And uh, maybe Ray, maybe you could um, work with Martin and then figure out. Uh, and, and with Don, all right, who do we get to come and look at this? Um, we need to have a, an idea where we're at, mm -hmm. you know, and because this may be something where all right, we need to budget X amount of dollars this fall right. in the budget to, to take care of this problem. Well, he also indicated there was some funds for that as well. Okay, so good. Was, so. Yeah, the hot air reclaimer. So it gets the moisture out, but keeps the hot air in. It's basically a fan. Yeah, and then, and a way to seal that with the, and then that would help, and then also sealing where the water is going into the eave. Do you think they'll be able to, uh, through, uh, uh, will they be able to come up with some budget numbers? Oh, Did yeah, no, I think so, yeah. They, they, uh, again, he sent us a, some contractors that, you know, that we could contact that would come and look at it and give us quotes and stuff like <coughs> that. Um, has Martin seen that information? Have we shared that? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, I got forwarded on the okay. Yeah. Info. okay, so he has that. And so I sent it to you guys. I don't know if you sent it to the rest of the week. So yeah, yeah, we got it. Yeah, we yeah. yeah. got it. You choose to read it yet, but um, so we're so, going to get a chance, and then the, you guys can all work together to make sure that that moves forward. But make sure yeah. that's on old business, too, so we're not forgetting it. Yeah, it is pretty important, I think, to get it. Yeah. And, and the town hall, obviously, that's still a work in progress. So, you know, we did do one of the things that, uh, that he told us that we should do, like, right away, which I did the other day, which was to unplug the refrigerator. There you go. Because he goes, you wouldn't believe how much energy that uses, especially when you don't have anything in it and no one's using it. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. It is surprising. Yeah, it's a big one. So, that was, that's been a point. Good. Uh, uh, but another item is I happen I bumped into uh, Mike uh, Michael Wood Mike Wood the other day, and uh, so just reminding the us or the board that you know he'll be stepping down in August, and uh, 
and then really, if once he's gone and there's not another lister, then this throws a bit of a gum into the works as far as uh, you know properties being evaluated, evaluated properly, real, real estate sales. And so he strongly suggested. I mean, I, this was just quickly at a little July Fourth party. You know, we get into it deep, but you know, the firm that they also use, the the assessor. Yeah. He was strongly in favor that uh, we consider, you know, getting them to be the. Yeah. So that's to do if it, we so. remind that's the um, when Mike came in, or I guess we were on Zoom at that point. Right. We, right. Um, we discussed that we were going to spend a little time this summer trying to find. Another lister, and Sasha. If you want to put that out on front porch form, you know, another time. But um, when that doesn't happen or does, <laughs> even if it does, I think we need to make those decisions. Um, and it's um, something that we would bring before the um, the town at some point, uh, at probably a town meeting to to make that the ch to change uh, with the listers. Um, we need them, I think, to sign off on the grand list, but uh, I think that's probably the only thing at this point. So, are you, anything else, Tom? Well, I, I had some other things. <laughs> I, I did call the guy, uh, Ryan, for the Taplin School just to follow up with him. I left him a message. I mean, I was a little down on the side the last two weeks, so I can't say I did you know, like I didn't have a chance to follow up on the remote system. I left a message for the top of the school guy today, actually, so. And um, uh, I guess the only other item is when, when we get to talk about the meeting, I have something there. So, oh, and if Ray got a chance to follow up on the 100B, you know, the guy, the, where I told you the road was, you know, Dan, you know, already having some serious. Uh, I did, I sent there. an email to I, I sent an email out to, to someone. someone. Yeah, good. So I'll find that. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> great. No, just I thought I'd we can bug them, you know, because it'll be a shame, you know, it'll be a shame if they, you know. Yeah, good. It's the same email I mentioned again about the uh, the, the uh, ponding right yeah. here. So, great. But I have not received a response. No, no, I mean, of course I always have stuff, but that's good for now. <laughs> <laughs> John, uh, I, don't, I don't have anything, so if Don wants to take my... No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. some, some pertinent that we're working on, Don. So, um, no, <laughs> a couple things that have come my way uh, as far as communications. We had a, a, an email from... And I don't have her name right in front of me, but she was wondering why we need to lock um, the access oh, yeah, over here. Right. They wanted, I thought they wanted it to be shut. No, Stephanie oh, was the other way around. Yeah, in a minute, I'll give you just a moment, Stephanie. I just want to make sure we're clear. Um, no, they would like, the question was, uh, oh, why is this locked? Everybody um, else is. Everyone else is allowed to. It's not a very far walk, and if you're getting exercise to me, but anyway, Stefan, you had some. Thoughts on this. So part of the reason that that got locked is when it's not locked overnight, some people like to come and blow down some of the field and make it That's right. for, yeah. for mowing and, and keeping the field, you know, looking decent. That was the reason that it originally got locked up. Right. And yeah, I think I recall that. Um, and I worry that, you know, especially with the, the new bike area out there, you know, all it takes is some some person that's out to have some fun and drive through, you know, a bunch of the work they did up there. Yeah, and I mean the road's only about a hundred yards to the tennis courts, right? It's it's not far. far. It's not far. <laughs> I see no reason. If if you can play tennis, then you can walk there. Okay, I thought I that was the case. Um, and there's plenty of access if, if someone's in a um, wheelchair or such to get around and up through. I, I just looked. I just right. And you're going to lower through, so a wheelchair should really get through. All right, things like that. I just want to make sure everyone has access to it. So, um, yeah, based on, you know, the history when we haven't had it, there's been problems. So I don't think there's any reason to change that. And, and it's, like I said, it's, it's, it's not very hard or far to the recre recreational facilities. And part of it was the, the bike trail. And if you're biking, again, I don't know what the problem is. So. 
We'll go ahead and leave that there. Um, the other gate issue that I had was up on um, the Moortown Mountain Road and Loretta Keen, um, she has the property that's right opposite uh, uh, Mr. Granfield's pit, the same pit up there. And there's a, um, there was a steel gate there and she shared photos with me of um, where the snow had been pushed back and pushed against the gate and, and such. Um, I contacted Martin, I got, right before we came, I got an email from Martin. He had an opportunity to take a look at it. He thought they were probably responsible for it, uh, for the damage on the gate. Um, so he's going to look in to a price, price out of gate to see what that might be. Um, the other thing is the gate up there, and I went and took a look at it yesterday as well. Um, the gate's really pretty functional. There's a couple of bends in it. So um, we may, I'm gonna let Martin handle it with her. Um, we may give him a little, you know, the price of the gate or a little bit of the money of the gate and um, finish what they got and, and help him with that. But, okay. Um, just so everybody's aware of that. Um, the other, Communication I have came from uh, Karen um, Karen Horn, and she was advocating for the um, planning commission to uh, continue remote uh, virtual meetings or, or having that ability to do that. Um, and she urged that we spend some money to get. We have a screen. This is a screen that I have. We can use it as long as I'm around, probably longer. I don't want to use it anymore. But we would need a mic, this owl yeah, the thing remote, or something. Yeah, right? the owl's nest that we were going to have. So I, I would still like, Don, if you could follow up yeah, and, you know, figure, and you know, see what people are thinking now that they're using it. Yeah. Because um, yeah. it sounds good, but how does it actually work? Yeah. Um, and that's then when we can, I would like to try it myself to hitch on a meeting just to see. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to um, get back to you this week on that. Um, so just that's out there so people are perhaps interested and there are good reasons um, we have weather events um, you know illness or something sometimes it may be and it may be the way of the world um, I guess that's all I have for uh, announcements or communications um, so Ray what else you have well uh, uh, I did meet with Ken, Roby, and from Two Boys and King, and Eric from Stantac, we walked the uh, west side sidewalk just informally. I just wanted to walk through there with them to make sure that we were all on the same page on a lot of things. And uh, um, you know, pretty much, I think they they've done a good, really good job. I think they got everything covered. They they know what they're looking at. Mm -hmm. I feel uh, pretty confident that. Uh, there, when they meet with the landowners, it, issues will be resolved, and everybody, you know, as best as they can, will be happy. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, like Frank Piazza's, his porch is right, it's in the right way. Yeah. <laughs> so he's going to lose everything around his porch. And, you know, I don't know how that's going to go, but it's, it's in the right way. So I think that's probably the most controversial. Uh, part of that whole project, yeah. probably. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't know <clears throat> any solution to that problem. Uh, it's, it's really not the town problem that he uh, is built so close to right away, but you know, we'll see where they go. But uh, Well, did he, did, <clears throat> did he actually build the porch? I, I don't know. I think that, I mean, that... He might have bought it like that. That building was a, you know, it was like a, a Kenyans years yeah. and years ago. So, uh, so you know, maybe, <clears throat> maybe, maybe it won't be a problem. Yeah, that's what I saw is the is the biggest thing there. Uh, the Sumner tree, I don't think, is an issue. Uh, well, that's good. Yeah, so I I, uh, I think Ken and Eric, uh, I think they're really a, a good. Uh, they've done a really good job as far as uh, planning out the project. Mm -hmm. And how about um, Strauss's? That is it. The locust tree that they were I, talking I think about? the locust tree is going to be okay. That's Some what of I thought. The smaller that's what I stuff. Thought. I think it's the smaller stuff have yeah. to be taken out, but I think the locust tree is good. Okay. Yeah, there are some areas mm -hmm. we can taper that sidewalk from five to four foot, you know, to give us, you know, uh, 
if necessary. Oh, really? Okay. So I, I didn't really know that, but uh, they're saying that it's okay. No, to I do didn't. That, so. I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I believe they'll be, you know, going going forward meeting with the landowners. Okay. So, and Kevin did give us an email, and I apologize for it, um, that he was going to start trying to meet with the landowners, um, just talk with them uh, to let them know where those changes are, what the difference between what it looks like on the map and what it um, actually would be. Um, so I think that's a good <coughs> step. Uh, once that happens, we'll get everyone back together, find out what. Uh, the temperature is there. We'll have more information at that point as far as as costs go uh, or, or not. We have spent money on the project. Um, I think roughly sixty thousand so far um, between engineering and, and such. I would have to look at that. Uh, that's just round figures. Um, and that stuff that if we decide not to do the project. We'll have to reimburse back to the state. So, what will you know? At this point, it's almost cost-wise, depending on whether we have lots of other uh, changes, um, it might be uh, the same or less to, to do or not do the project. It's going to cost us money one way or another. Um, but we'll have a, a better indication on that. Uh, that being said, um, on the meeting minutes. When I was originally asked what the town share was, I had said 80,000. Uh, and I had gotten that figure from Cheryl in that, that night. Um, but there was a mistake there me, um, made, and she corrected that with me the next morning. It was 103,000 that the town share would be. So that will be changed on the meeting minutes as well. But I wanted to make sure that was clarified. And, um, apparently, the 80 that was written on the folder inside. But it was an old number from her mother or something. But uh, uh, we had a point though. I mean, that um, since we're gonna, um, they're gonna meet with the landowners, and then there's gonna be a regrouping and talking yeah. about it. And, but it, maybe after we, they meet with the landowners, we kind of have the consultants stop doing anything for a little while, just so we don't keep the meter running and spending money while we have our own. You know, you know. In other words. They meet with the landowners, we get that information, we have a meeting, and then go well, think, forward from there, because, you know, not have them keep doing it. Right, but well, I think that, I think once we, we have a better idea of what's going on, then we can make those decisions. Do right? yeah. we want to put the brakes on things, stop things? Do we go forward and let the town, you know, do we vote, when do we vote on this? Or what type of information do we need right. for that? I was just, you know, something you just, you know, at some point you have to say, okay, wait, don't spend any more money. While we're right, exactly. Right. If we're, but we need to get to a point yeah. in the process where we have all the information to make those decisions. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, then we can make those. Um, I know there's some discussion on some of the, the soils uh, that they've taken, uh, uh, the soil samples. Or, or such, I didn't quite understand. Yeah, so the, the state has came out, this is, you know, within the last year, uh, they have this, uh, uh, I forget the exact term of it, but it's basically contamination of the soils from exhaust from vehicles. And so uh, they're looking at that and, and seeing if there is any of that in this segment on the right side of which could affect the cost either way. I don't I still understand that. So they're if within the, the soils, the, the exhaust from cars going by. Yeah. And the, yeah, it settles on the pavement and then it washes. It, it's the, like the roads when it first starts raining and you're bicing, it's so very slippery. Because yep. you know? they have this layer of like oils that come out of the other exhaust, you know, this particles. Like really right, yeah. Huh. Right. I'm just being engineering and creating them look at it. Right. So, I mean, there's, I mean, it's like, right. So, yeah. things like that, or, or, you know, something like that comes up, and that's going to be a, you know, a, a significant cost of the project. Those are the type of things. Well, those are the type of things we're trying to get the information on so we can make that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, we decision. had the, that but on this side, too. Think about but it, it wasn't an issue on this side. 
because yes. the regulations came into effect after <laughs> this project I, was. I, geez. Yeah. Yeah, that's I, crazy. I, I, it's another unfunded mandate. It, yeah, that's and also is in the river too. So, it's um, <clears throat> anyway. So there, there are plenty of issues to to take a look at that. Yeah. We're doing everything we can to make sure that we get all the correct information and that we can make a informed decision on that. Well, if, if Ken needs any assistance, I'd be happy to join him on any of the meetings, especially Frank. All right. Very good. We'll let him. We'll let him know that. Uh, Ray, did you have anything else? Yeah, there's a couple other things. Uh, one, we'll go into executive session later regarding that uh, uh, meeting uh, with Bill Woodard uh, and the Cheney case. Uh, I did talk to Martin about uh, the where we're at with the consultant. Um, I think he consults and he's doing the, the work with Martin <coughs> as far as a coding and a page. Robert Turner. Robert Turner, okay. So <clears throat> Martin told me that. Uh, he believes the ball is in Martin's court. He was, uh, he was having trouble with his computer, uh, and Mr. Turner, Mr. Turner, I believe, is scheduled, or Martin was working on getting them scheduled to come up and help him get through this problem they're having. Okay. So uh, Martin is working on it. It's been uh, obviously Martin's working on roads too. So, but uh, he does have it on his agenda right. to get this done. Good with that. Anything else from the shop or anything else you want to share? There? No, uh, I'm not sure where we stand with the, with the lawnmower, snow plow. We talked to uh, Harvest the end of last week, I think it was Thursday, and they hadn't <coughs> received the part yet. It was on back order. So it's, you know, just waiting for the part to come and then get scheduled in. They are swamped there as well. So and we what, haven't heard anything yet today from it, but we're going to call them again this week and you know keep on the lookout with what's going on with that. So in the meantime, we're just doing it with. So Eric has been doing um, okay the mowing. I spoke to Martin a couple of weeks ago, um, and they between vacations and just we have more road maintenance work we have to do. Um, Eric's done it in the past. He's. Uh, He's done it a couple times. The guys have been doing uh, some of the, uh, the trimming as well. Uh, but we'll um, yep. go ahead and do that until um, you know the machine comes back. And Martin, I did speak with Martin that last Thursday or Friday about that, and that's exactly what he said. They're saying a week or two um, before the part comes in again, and then you know they'll get to it when they can. But um, well, we, uh, you know, we give our once a week. You know, call up and, and check in just so we don't get, you know, brushed down the road. We'll try to get back as efficient as we can. Good. And I tell him to submit um, for himself, and I don't know whether it was Sean or, or the guys if they brought their mowers over to, um, you know, submit uh, 50 bucks a time that they use their mower to, to pay or to do the lawn. Um, and he said that would be fair. But, uh, I haven't heard anything on that, so. But hopefully that will get fixed up. And I think um, they're working on something uh, in the budget. He's looking at something else, so we'll, we may or may not see something um, with that. Um, Ray, do you, are you all set? Yeah, like I said, we'll need one executive. Yep. Yeah. All right. Aside from that, yeah, and we'll do that <coughs> towards the end, so we don't have to kick anyone out until we're towards the end of the meeting. All right. So next thing we have is the select board minutes. Um, noted change that I um, talked about earlier. Is there any other changes or? Um, yeah, I don't have them in front of me, but just from reading them, just in the part when we talked about the sidewalk. Yeah. I think there should be something included in there that there were, you know. Uh, residents here who were speaking out against, you know, the possibility of not having a sidewalk. There's no, nothing really mentioned in there that people were wanting to have it looked at, the possibility of not doing it. Yeah. You know, just to add that into the notes. 
Даже отходил бы хайда. John, thank you. Gotcha this time. <laughs> Any other uh, discussion on the meeting uh, minutes for uh, 621? 621-21. All right. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Okay. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Uh, all right. So now we, we move on to old business. And um, we've already talked about the ATV ordinance. Um, and we have CB Fiber and the, the service officer down there as well. Um, service officer, Sasha, I guess we're still looking uh, for that yes. or someone there. Um, and Lister. And Lister. Um, and as far as CB Fiber, um, they're looking again. We will need to at some time when we get into budget season what we want to do with some of our funds that we have, uh, perhaps to allocate or not to them. Um, the other thing that I have uh, for old business is some Morfest stuff. Um, and I have a contract uh, for the fireworks that we discussed. Um, so that the dates, and I think we went over this. Um, uh, I need to change this. There's the same thing. This is the 25th day uh, of September. Um, that was the week later than what we had originally said. Um, so I'm hoping all have uh, that date available. Um, I will be in Stratton, but that's okay. Stratton? What are you doing down there? Doing some run or something up a mountain? OCR World Championships. Yeah. I qualified two years ago, so, and then it was canceled last year, so. Oh, I'm qualified to go this that? year in Stratton. What is it? What is it called? It's Obstacle Course Racing World Championships. Wow. Gee. Nice. Um, I know I, I talked. I spoke with Stefan. He sounds. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so Sean will be there though. <laughs> that means I can have Sean the whole day. No, no. <laughs> exactly. So um, I know we reached out. I think Stefan's going to be involved as well. With, with more fest, but they seem to be moving along um, pretty well with that. Um, we had budgeted for the the um, events. Uh, we put in our budget this year. We put five thousand in. There's four thousand for the fireworks. Um, the other thing that they have asked for out of that money, well, we probably will ask for it all at some point. But the, the other thing they've been able to um, Contractor, if we uh, say okay, is the Ragged Company. It's a uh, band that's out of one of the guys lives in town, Steve Sharp. Um, two one hour sets at Morfest uh, for $500. So we have those um, two uh, events scheduled there. Don? Um, so I, I'm waiting to get a quote on those hats that I showed everybody. Yeah. The Motown hats. I went to Deerfield the other day, so you know, I'll keep keep you posted on you know. Yeah, so Maybe what's your thought on that? We will buy them and then we sell them or something like that. Yeah, something or some kind of a donation yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, something that was a fundraiser. Yeah, so, yeah. I think that's a that would yeah. be a good idea. I mean then I was talking I mean we're not talking he said, you know, you you, you maybe want to get fifty or eighty hats tops, you know. Yeah. It's not like you're gonna buy two hundred. He said you'll have a hundred and fifty so there's no, a the guy lives here on Earl Road of Owens Deerfield, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, he, it was great. You know, it wasn't like he said, Oh yeah, buy two hundred and fifty hats. You know, he was we like, you know, for you. Yeah, we, so <laughs> uh, I'll hopefully by the next meeting I'll have some information. Yeah. Or I could just get in touch with Leanne and tell her about it. Or, you know, whatever. So just so everyone on the committee the committee is Made up of um, Leanne Martin, I wish she my wife, uh, Lindsay Staples, Michelle Beard, Meg Schultz, and Dwayne Pierce. Oh, great. So those are the people, that everyone that's Good. working on it. And anyone else who would like to, to participate or work on it. Um, I know they've reached out to the um, Jennifer Hill with the library to make sure they're involved. The school has. 
Um, we've got the beer tents from Lawson's all secured, so they're doing that. Are they going to be a sheriff as well? They asked about that if we need a sheriff, but I, I, I don't know. know if we do or not, but I thought that if we were on public land, I kind of you had to have one or not. Well, we need to look into that, whether we need to The other thing is we have, we have um, Tom Cheney, our, and he's a, he's a registered, he's a police officer, so. Jeanette. Jeanette. Yeah. Tom Jeanette. Yeah. Um, and these are. <coughs> Constables, thank you, Sasha. So he might, uh, if we need something, but we can look into that. Well, certainly the safety is, is going to be a paramount. Um, I've reached out to um, one of our companies in town, hopefully to get a sponsor to sponsor a pig roast. Um, and it sounds like they may. And I've got someone who lined up who would do it for us um, for $500. We can get a 130 pound pig roasted. Um, these guys are doing corn. Yeah, and, uh, working with the old farmers trying to get them to, you know, to donate again to help us and you know, we had a little by donation but fundraiser for the fire department as well. And I thought the same with, with, the, with the pig thing. We got it sponsored. It'll be by donation so any, anyone can come. This is a free event but if you have a donation you give it and that money can go to some something in town whether it's um, I think that community, whatever we can come up with something, but the thing that we get out to people or something like that, or just so it gives back to whoever's coming. Um, so I think they're, they're sounds like they're on good. the right track and yeah. everyone's trying to, to get some things done. So um, I just like a, a motion to approve um, what we have so far, the two, two events. I think we already talked about the fireworks, but just so um, approve the, the band. I make the motion to approve the expenditures for more fest. Thank you, Cal. Any uh, discussion? Oh. All in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. I want you have. Uh, All right. <laughs> um, and again, if anyone is, uh, has things are coming up, you've got ideas of popping up in your head or, or things that we could possibly uh, do, um, let us know. One of the things that Again, we're trying to make this uh, not cost a lot of money, but have, you know, or certainly free for people coming in. Um, I'm thinking like a touch the truck thing, you know, and step on. Uh, you think about that with fire trucks, if, uh, maybe at the town of large. Um, and maybe you guys, not necessarily, if you can talk with Martin and, um, or just everyone down there. You guys must have good connections, or even you, Ray, who has, you know, who can bring in a nice piece of equipment or something, you know, um, one of those things. We'll just ask for the vendors. We'll want a demo on an excavator for the day. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> all I need. <laughs> good idea. The blue dump truck we have is beautiful. That would be nice to bring down. Oh, yeah. I think that would be a good thing to let uh, the new one there, let people see that. And, um, kids that like the green. Yeah, it's really nice. The color is great. I love it. Yeah. Um, and if anyone, again, has ideas of those things, or if you have a race car or something you want to drop by with, that would be good. Or, I don't know. What do you have? Are you going to be going over there, Travis? Or anything? Lost them all on the fire. Oh, well, that's right. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, that's moving on. Any other. Um, old business that we have to discuss here tonight. Yeah, I just want to say, I was, because I was down on the side, and we'll be in touch, you know, we were going to be looking at the trees in front of the sand pit. And, you know, right. Was, you know, right, right. We have the soil report, we're going to think about feeding the trees, so okay. I lost two weeks there, but I'll get back on the case. And you got to talk to Martin. About I've talked to Martin already yeah. about it. So yeah, great. It, uh, you know, it, just it's much more figuring figuring out what we can do it, right? Because right, he has people going on vacation. No, and no, and they're busy. Right. And I've got some people who would help too, so. Yeah. That's great. Very good. And the uh, personnel policy, we're going to any more on that tonight. I've got the numbers over there. Yep. <clears throat> so we were. 
take a look at um, what was being paid now and the changes that we were looking for. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I still, I, I think the way we used to do the family is we did the same thing with the um, two person in that we paid 50% of the difference between the single rate and the family rate. And it, it's still, I, I'm still not happy with the way that it reads. Um, I, I think that if you're, we're going to keep the, the, where it says single rate, then we should, uh, under dependence, we should make sure that that's additional. In other words, we pay that in addition to. So, I mean, if, if we just, I mean, it's okay to have numbers in there, but I mean, I would just say that we should be saying that, that we pay 100% of the single rate per employee, and um, and yeah. then and then for adding dependents, say 50% plus 50%, plus 50 of so the two-person or family rate. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's nice because they change yearly. Every year, those numbers will change, but we we have the percentage that we're paying, so we know. Um, what that would be. So, how did you word that? 100% of employee? Of the uh, single rate per employee. And then 50% of the uh, additional. Uh, let's see, what's, that, what's the best way to put that? Um, oh, okay. So, in other words, if, if you want to add dependents, then it's 50% of the difference between the single rate and a two person or family. I think that's probably the that best. I think um, what to do, why don't you guys, this, I don't think this is something we should vote on tonight. Why don't we put it together? Yeah, okay. And then. That's so everyone can read it and kind of really make yeah. sure and clarify. Um, so just we'll just talk about that. Right. And so we'll eliminate the numbers and we'll have the percentages yep. there. And it's all sense. based on the policy, what we have. We just need to make sure that it's right. in here correctly. Yep. Yep. Are you clear, Sasha, with that? Yeah. All right. Let me just make sure. You got a couple new things? That's all right. All right, what do we got for new business? Um, Neck of the Woods has been parking their van out here overnight and they just wanted to make sure that it was okay with you guys. It's going to be for a total of seven weeks. They've been transporting it from here to their building out towards Woodsfield. And that was involved from the old Mecca. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as it's not, you guys don't want to find that in your way for any maintenance issues or anything like that? I haven't even noticed that it was here yet, so. Okay, so, <laughs> seems like that's fine. It's not a bother to the town crew, and that's the only person that's really using the lots at this point. Is there, uh, is, I would say, do we have like a good phone number just in case for some reason it is part of yeah. in a place that we needed it moved at a weird time or something? All right. Okay. That sounds fun. And then Dick Velasanetti's term is up as of the end of July and he would like to continue and that paperwork is in the binder over there for approval. All right, well I will um, make a motion to reappoint Dick Valentinetti, the uh, town health officer. Second. Thank you, John. Any questions on uh, uh, Dick's appointment to uh, health officer? All in favor, vote aye. 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 Thank you. And then I talked to the listers, Mike Wood, and just to kind of continue on what Don was saying, they, have, they haven't found anybody. They did have one person that they thought was interested, but they ended up not buying it. And Mike also said that the, new, the appraisal 
will be coming up in 24, the reappraisal for okay. town wide. Um, Nemrick will give us a good deal on it as long as it's done in the immediate future. Otherwise, the price is going to be going up. All right, so we'll need to maybe get Ed in here from Nemrick okay. to discuss that. Yeah. But you know what? I think that would be good for our August first week in August meeting. He's here so we can discuss both issues, lister issues, and what they could okay. do there. And um, if there's a reappraisal coming up, um, what we should do there. We might we probably come to that meeting too, I bet. Yeah, I think that's something we want to have him participate oh, in. Like, yeah. That's it. Okay. All right. Anyone else around the table have any other <coughs> business um, up there, Don? You know? Yeah, I don't think there's anything else. Um, we'll also maybe at the, the next meeting be able to set the tax rate. Um, I, I've got some preliminary preliminary stuff from the the, uh, the state on the school rate. Um, and it looks um, better than it has. You know, because of the uh, increases that we've seen in the past. Um, but then I, I don't have those uh, concrete yet. So uh, by, by our next meeting, we should be able to have a <coughs> fairly good discussion on the tax rate. Um, hopefully we can set it at that meeting so we can get that filled up and get the money in. And uh, we got the ATV stuff that we're looking at in the future. Um, Don, you're working on a couple other pro little projects, continue just to um, Make sure that everyone is um, touching base with everyone so that everyone can help and, and get these stuff moving forward. And if there's no other questions, concerns, I would make oh, a motion to go into executive session um, for Ray uh, issue, and that is um, this is where premature public knowledge. Or, or John, what was this? Hey. The, what was the lawyer one? Well, this is this is uh, yeah. I think it's the, the lawyer one. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So that that would be um, executive session to discuss uh, attorney-client communications uh, uh, in the. Say the an, an accident occurred on our roads. <clears throat> so that's, uh, as as um, as in Title One, Section Three Thirteen One F. That states confidential attorney client communications made for the pur purpose of providing legal services to the body. Yep. Yeah. All in, uh, is there a second on that? Second. All in favor of aye. 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 Now, I do, also <coughs> just want to point out, we will be going into open session after this. Okay, we have to make sure Come that people realize that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See so, you guys, thank you. Come back and have some more fun. Great. All right, so uh, all in favor of the executive session, vote aye. 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 All right.